With protests taking place across the nation, we decided to get some more info. We interviewed two UW faculty to get some historical context as well as some resources surrounding issues of diversity. I'm Isadora Helfgott. I'm an associate professor in history and the department chair. Protests and riots go back to the founding of the country, obviously to the American Revolution, um, and have always existed here as a way of um, expressing discontent when Americans have been, have felt that the system is not supporting them. So that goes back to the revolutionary times in more modern period in the 20th century. There were a series of riots that are similarly situated to what's happening now that have been expressions of frustration with examples of racial injustice and also economic inequality. It's hard to speak in comparative perspective. I think there are a lot of underlying conditions that are very similar now compared to um, some of the larger scale riots that we've seen in American history, some of the same issues of segregation and inequality and economic inequality as well as racial inequality, um, I think are motivating these, these actions. Um, there's a particular confluence of things I think that are being expressed now, which are a little different um, and that have, have created a sense of urgency here. Obviously they were spurned by the recent events in Minneapolis but I think that's compounded um, by the pandemic, by the unequal way that the pandemic seems to be affecting people, by the economic dislocations that are being caused by the pandemic, which themselves are affecting a lot of people in urban areas who have lost their jobs. A lot of those people in the 1960s, those were people who were still um, very much employed in jobs, you know, that were middle-class wage jobs. And now a lot of those industrial jobs have disappeared. And so there's a lot of economic dislocation, I think that's also contributing to some of the the extraordinary frustrations with the racial injustice and the official, seemingly official stamp on the racial injustices that we're seeing now. So I think what's particularly unique perhaps is the confluence of all the things that are happening at once right now. But in terms of the, the actions themselves, there's a lot of similarities with what we've seen in um, previous historical periods. The collective voice is a very important thing. It's an important force in American history. It's an important force locally, but it's also, I think, on a national level, um, it's just critical to understand that that these injustices that happen in discrete places, they have national ripples and repercussions, and, and we all feel it. My name is Emily Monago, and I'm the Chief Diversity Officer at the University of Wyoming, and I work in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I reviewed the email that ASUW sent out mm -hmm. to the campus community. I looked at those resources and those resources are excellent. I think they provided a great foundation for students to educate themselves and to get involved. In the area of student affairs, they have the, the Center for Student Leadership, CECL is the acronym for it. And um, they are very good at providing uh, programs and services to get students involved through their multicultural affairs area, through their service leadership area. And all of the opportunities that they provide, they're not only fun, they're educational. So I think there are a number of ways that students can educate themselves. Well, everyone's different and the ways that they can support will be different. Um, the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, we fully support Black Lives Matter, the protests that have been happening uh, right here in our, our backyard in Laramie. It is encouraging and heartening to see that taking place right here in, in, in Laramie. So for students to get involved, again, I, I would point to the resources with our, our multicultural affairs area, with our student affairs area. They are really here for co-curricular co engagement. What happens outside the classroom? I know that there are activities in the residence halls. If they go to their website, they're, they're still hosting virtual programs. Um, those are listed on their website. So I would encourage students to get involved that way. We're, we're also offering support through the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for students of color and marginalized populations. So coming up on June 16th, at 4 p.m., the uh, one of our um, employee networks that we 
offer through the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the uh, Employee Network for Black and African American faculty and staff. They're hosting a community check-in for not only employees, faculty, and staff, but students. Um, we realize that all uh, of our marginalized identities have allies and supporters in our campus community. It's, it's not to devalue that, but just to bring those communities together to support one another because we are really scattered throughout the campus community and sometimes it's it, it takes a little facilitation to get everyone together um, and I know that our Asian uh, and Pacific Islander um, employee network is hosting something similar they're calling it uh, a social hour on social issues that's coming up on uh, June 30th they're both going to happen at uh, 4 p.m. Um, and so students are invited into that space and they're great spaces just for uh, support and connecting. So we do have uh, through our office in partnership with the um, graduate education uh, area um, a, a leadership program for gra uh, graduate students. It's called the um, Inclusionary Leadership Program. And we piloted the program in uh, fall 2019, spring 2020. Uh, we were able to complete the first cohort of graduate students. It's a six week program on leadership and how to include inclusive practices in your leadership. And so we're looking at launching that on a, on a larger scale. One of the things that we've tried to do to um, really connect with the community is through our Council on Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, we have a community engagement subcommittee. Another piece of that is we uh, offer uh, a variety of programs throughout the year and um, Many of them are open to the campus community. So one of the goals of diversity education is to learn more about yourself, also learn about other cultures. Um, and we have a variety of opportunities. Uh, our, our student organizations do an excellent job of, of sharing their culture um, and educating not only the campus, but the community at large. So I, I think there are opportunities for education and involvement um, through some of the programs that we have for our campus community, not only for students, faculty, and staff, but the doors are open for the community to participate as well. I'm thinking just off the, the top of my head, some that, that come to mind are like the School of Culture, Gender, and Social Justice. They offer a symposium every fall. I don't know what that'll look like this fall, but that's a great opportunity. And the community is, uh, the doors are open to the community to come to that. Uh, the MLK Days of Dialogue, those are community events. The Shepherd Symposium on Social Justice is another excellent way uh, to get involved, open to the campus and the community. Uh, people come from everywhere to attend uh, the events that I mentioned. And we also can't forget our uh, Social Justice Research Center here on campus. Um, they offer events, they have a repository of information that's open to the, the community. And if, if there are any questions, uh, you know, they can contact my office, they can contact uh, the, the Center for Leadership, Multicultural Affairs, the, the School of Culture, Gender, and Social Justice, or uh, the Social Justice Research Center. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're open to having everyone who wants to, to learn and get involved come and, and join some of the things that we have going on in our campus community. We're here ultimately for student success, mm -hmm. and we want to educate students who have the skill sets to uh, navigate a, a complicated world. We're going to be in contact with people from all over the world. So having cultural competence in, in every area of your, your education, be it in the classroom or in, through co-curricular engagement is important to our, our campus community and is one of our values of, of the university. We value diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we want that to be part of your educational experience.